Hello everyone, this is Jim Nix and thanks for tuning in. I was trying to do a Facebook Live yesterday and unfortunately due to some technical problems, nobody could hear me. So I am now recording this and sharing it here on YouTube and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, in this video I'm going to have a couple of different photos, walk through some edits and just share some tips and tricks on how I like to use Luminar 2018. I'll start with this photo. Now this is a castle on the coast of Scotland and as you can see it's a fairly dramatic sort of uh, spot and while I don't want to overdo the drama I definitely want to amp up the color and the details a little bit and one of the things I like to do is just uh, use the accent AI filter so you just click on add filters and get accent AI and I'm also going to get tone let me close that and the beauty of accent AI of course is that it makes such a dramatic impact on your photo with uh, just this one slider so it's really very intelligent and it does in my opinion an incredible job on a photo as you can see here so I went from that to that in a single slider the great thing about it is if you look at the before you can see that the sky was a little bit uh, too bright and of course the foreground is a little too dark it's sort of a typical exposure right and with the adjustment slider of uh, the accent AI filter it, the light has basically been rebalanced, but I've also got a nice little pop of color and clearly I haven't done anything to increase or uh, change the saturation. So that's one of the powerful things about Accent AI and that's why I really recommend it. It's kind of a super filter. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, it's almost like the easy button and uh, you know it just gives you a lot of power over your photo right out of the gate. So I use that filter all the time, honestly. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is apply a little tone here. I'm going to bump up the contrast because um, it is somewhat flat looking and so now it's uh, got quite a bit more contrast but it's a little too dark in some of these areas and so for me that's where Smart Tone comes in. I'm going to move Smart Tone a little bit to the right and as you can see that's brightening up some of those shadows that were created when I added the contrast. So let's see what Tone has done to the image. There's the before and there's the after. And once again the colors, because of the change in contrast, the colors are really starting to pop a little bit more. And so keep that in mind, I, I've mentioned this before, but whenever you're increasing contrast, it is generally going to change the perception of how the colors are looking in your photo. So keep that in mind and uh, you know, you may not need to increase saturation for example or even vibrance on a photo if you increase the contrast first. And so I recommend doing that. And that's really all uh, I would probably do to this photo. So I can show you the before and the after. Perhaps one other thing, I might just add a smoothing layer of denoise to the sky. And uh, if you weren't familiar, in Luminar 2018, denoise is now a filter available in this filter menu here. Uh, it's right there under Issue Fixers. And uh, in the previous version, it was a tool. The tool menu is now up here. The same tools reappear although they've been improved, but Denoise, although it's also been improved, it is much quicker and it is real time, but now it's a filter. Uh, I like it a lot better personally, and I think it's much easier to use. So I can just smooth out my photo, do any kind of you know boost that I wanna do, and then I go get my brush, and I choose that, and I'm gonna increase the size of my brush and just kinda of paint that across the sky. So very simple, very basic edit there in terms of um, not just the sky and there's the mask uh, but also in terms of what I did to the photo just a quick tone adjustment and an accent AI filter adjustment with a little bit of denoise and I went from that to that and so that's another thing to think about is and by the way um, I, I don't always follow my own advice just to be clear but um, the there's so much power and so many filters in Illuminar that it's really tempting to just start grabbing things and moving them and stacking more filters and more filters and more filters. And as I just said, I do that all the time. And it's one of the great things about Luminar. But I also like to point out that despite all the power that you have available to you, you don't have to use so many things on every photo. If you start with a, you know, a decently lit photo like this one with a couple of minor filter adjustments, I have a much more colorful, uh, you know, better contrast better light, uh, better lit sort of photo and in my opinion I came a long way and I only did really two things if you don't count denoise. So very simple, very straightforward but that's the first edit. So and now I see I would probably use the eraser tool and take out that and I've got a spot there and I'd probably take out that. Those are all very simple. In fact I'd probably take out that as well. Very simple to do. You just go over here to the eraser tool and click on erase and then uh, highlight over what you're going to erase and then just click erase. Very simple. I'm not going to 
show that here just because I'm going to move on to another photo. And now I didn't really plan this in advance uh, that I wanted to show two castles in a row, but here they are. Uh, this is a second castle. This is a, a really well-known castle in Germany called Neuschweinstein. And um, it's beautiful. It's an incredibly dramatic setting. But as you can see, I wasn't there during a dramatic time of day. I was there. I took a tour. It was just a lot of fun. It's a beautiful place to walk around. Anyway, I took a tour during the day and got to see stuff. And then you go out on this hike sort of above it. And there's this wonderful bridge that uh, is where I stood to take this photo. And it was crammed with tourists. It was kind of crazy. But nonetheless, it's well worth having. My point, however, is that I was in this beautiful, dramatic place. I didn't really have great light. So I want to do something a little bit different. And so I'm actually going to turn this into um, a black and white. So I'm going to add black and white. And then I'm going to use a texture as well. And so there's a cool filter in Luminar called Texture Overlay. And it's right there. And then I'm also going to add one of the new filters, the LUT mapping filter. And then I'm going to top it off with Soft Focus. So I'm just kind of having fun here. Let me go ahead and get started on the black and white. And so uh, first thing I'm going to do is bump up the contrast a little bit. Whenever I create monochromes, I really like to do uh, a little bit of contrast. I think that looks what you know really uh, really good in these kind of situations. And in this uh, photo, I want to take down the highlights because the sky was really bright. And I want to bump up the clarity a bit just to get it uh, a little uh, sharper, a little bit more punchy. And, you know, it's creating a tiny bit of... Uh, noise over here in the sky, but I don't care because I'm going to add a texture, and so that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, the texture overlay filter is a great one. It does differ. You could also add a texture by clicking on the layers panel, adding a new image layer, and sticking a texture in that way, but the reason I like to do it with the texture overlay function is you just go in here, you choose your texture. I have this weathered cement texture from my texture pack, uh, and there it is. Um, the nice thing about it is you can increase or decrease the amount. So that's kind of like changing the opacity. Uh, actually, it's not kind of like. It basically is, which is what you would do if you added a texture as a new layer. You would want to change the opacity so that you could see the photo underneath. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go about something like you know 25 or so. And then one of the cool things I like is that you have this zoom feature. So you can take your texture and zoom it in or out across your photo and kind of do whatever you like. And so, you know, you're not really worried about it getting blurry or noisy or anything because uh, it is a texture and it doesn't really need to be that, uh, that focus. So I'm going to zoom it just a little bit, maybe something like, uh, let's see, let me look at zero again. So there's zero. I think I'll just go to about like that, so say 13. Now, in some cases, it really makes a lot of sense to change blend modes. And all I do uh, here usually is I just recommend taking a look at them by, you know, clicking around and checking things out. I already know that I like the normal blend mode on this one, so I won't bore you with walking through all of those different blend modes. But there's, I think, 14 of them, so there's a lot of flexibility to really create the look that you want. Okay, so I've got the texture looking good. Let me show you the before and the after, right? So there's the before, there's the after. Now, I'm going to add a LUT file. And LUT's uh, a short for lookup table, and it's basically, and you've heard me say this before, I'm sure, it's basically a file that's used to add a color look to a photo. They're generally used in movie making. But I've got some LUTs here, and I'm going to use this warm LUT and stick it on the photo, and there you go. Now, I like that. It's giving it, to me, a little bit of a vintage look, which is what I'm going for, but I'm going to tone down the amount a little bit, which is part of the cool things, I think, in the, uh, in the LUT mapping filter. The other great thing, of course, is that you can change contrast, which I am going to do, and you can also change saturation. So I could saturate it more or less. It's not making a huge impact, but I'm going to do something like that. So let me show you now. There's the before, more of a traditional monochrome slash black and white, and here a little bit more of a sepia flavor, which I was able to add by using that warm looking LUT file. And so I'm basically creating a vintage kind of sepia type look. And then the uh, for me, the, the topping off of this is to use a soft focus. I'm going to go with version 2. And I'm going to move this to about 40, you know, 45, 50. Let's say something like that. And I'm going to take the brightness down a little. And so all I'm doing is creating sort of a washed out, kind of faded looking photo. You can see the photo is a whole lot sharper there. 
and soft focus has really softened it up quite a bit. So that is uh, how that one works. And so I think, uh, I think we've come a long way. Let me show you. Here's the before and here's the after. So again, clear blue skies, kind of boring to be honest. Um, and uh, you know, I think a beautiful castle, in fact, my favorite castle that I've seen, dramatic, beautiful, just incredible to look at. Um, and after, made it look like a photo that may have been taken 50 or, or 60 years ago kind of thing. And that's really the look that I was going for. And so again, part of the flexibility of Luminar is that you have so many things, you know, so many tips and tricks you can use to, you know, sort of arrows in the quiver, so to speak, of things you can do to your photo. But again, if you remember on the last one, I really only used two filters plus denoise, so you can call it three. On this one, I used four filters, right? Black and white, texture overlay, LUT mapping, and soft focus. So again, you don't have to have 10 or 20 or you know multiple layers to really get to a unique and different look. You can do it with just a few filters applied, uh, you know, sort of sparingly in many cases. So that is the second photo. Now I'm going to hop in to this third photo and see what we can do here. Now this was taken in New Orleans one evening, and uh, this is St. Louis Cathedral in Jackson Square. It's a long exposure, and it's actually a really old photo, but uh, it's one that I love that I took many years ago. So I'm gonna go get some filters, and this one I'm uh, just gonna do the kind of things that I like to normally do to a photo. So I'm gonna experiment with color temperature. I'm gonna do a little accent AI and some tone. I'm gonna use saturation and vibrance. And then I'm going to stick some image radiance on here and some split color warmth. And this is where I'm completely ignoring what I said earlier about only using a few filters. I'm going to use a, quite a few here, uh, but uh, I'm going to make a very different looking photo. And uh, HSL is my last one. And so I'm using a lot of uh, filters to do that. So with color temp, I'm going to start here. I've got, uh, I'm going to go like negative 25 or something like that, uh, maybe about there. And I'm gonna move the tint a little bit to the right. Uh, it was kind of a post uh, blue hour kind of twilight look, or post sunset kind of early blue hour. And I'm gonna bring back some of those colors. Accent AI is incredible as I already shared with you and I'm sure you know from the previous version of Luminar, should you have that. Um, contrast needs to go up a little bit. It's a little too uh, flat for my taste. So I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast. And then I'm gonna come into saturation and vibrance, and I'm okay with the saturation level. I'm just gonna bump up the vibrance a bit. I really wanna give the photo some pop. And so I think uh, you can see that made a big impact on the photo. There's the before and the after. The colors are really starting to pop. And let me show you the, the very before and where we are now. So we're getting there, but I'm, I'm really not finished. I wanna add some image radiance. I love this filter because it gives a sort of a, I like to call it a romantic glow. It really softens up details. So you don't want to use it on every photo or may, maybe you want to use it sparingly or not move the slider too far. Uh, it does create a lot of shadow and make things really soft if you go real far, but I'm going to go to about 29, but you can see the before and the after, kind of that I like to call romantic glow. Now I'm going to use split color warmth. And this is really one of my favorite filters. I used it all the time in the previous version of Luminar, and it just works really well. So let me uh, slide these sliders around. Basically, it separates the warm colors and the cool colors, and you can either warm them up or cool them off, either the warm colors or the cool colors. So I hope that's not too confusing sounding. Uh, if you go to the right, you're generally warming them up. So I wanna warm up both the warm and the cool colors. And uh, I'm going pretty far, but you can see it has a nice impact on the sky. Let me show you the before and the after, really bringing back some of those pink kind of sunset tones, which is why I used it here. I think it worked really well. Now I wanna use Dodge and Burn. This is a new filter in Luminar 2018. Very powerful and uh, I'm really happy to have it. So I'm gonna start with um, lightning. I'm gonna go about 25 or so. I just want to come down here to the street and just add a little bit of uh, lightning there. Um, I don't want it to be really bright, but it's a little too dark for me, so I'm just kind of brightening up a little bit of that area. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to darken some of these areas uh, around in here. So really what I'm doing is using Dodge and Burn to kind of create a little bit more contrast in the photo. And so I'm kind of doing this quickly, but I think that's a little bit better and what I was looking for. Let me show you the before 
You can see it was a little bit darker down here and brighter up in this section. And I basically used a dodge and burn to uh, basically reverse that. I don't want to mess with the sky. I love the tones and the luminance values in the sky. I think that looks really good. Um, I felt like the before it was a little too bright around these street lights uh, and in that building, and it was a little too dark here. And the truth is I want to draw the viewer's eye more to the, the passing light trails of the car, these horses and their carriages. Uh, and, and so that's what the dodge and burn did for me. So there you go. In fact, I might actually go back and lighten a little bit more. And so let's say, let's say I'm at 33 now. Maybe I'll lighten this a little bit more. I don't want to overdo it. I, and it's pretty bright there, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, I don't want to create it, you know, too out of balance. So I'm just going to do that and be done. So let's see the before and the after of that filter. I think it looks better. I think I've drawn the eye to the spots that I think are worth drawing the eye to, which to me are kind of the cathedral with the sunset behind it and then the, the very bottom of the foreground with the horse and carriages there. So that's how uh, Dodge and Burn works. Very selective, very powerful, and you can, as I've already shown you, you can lighten and darken using the filter one time on the same layer. You don't have to stack it again and again. So I love that. Now I'm just going to bump up the brilliance a little bit. And uh, the warmth, I'm actually going to go a little bit to the left. Uh, I'm going to do about negative 20 or so, something like that. And so you can see the photos starting to pop a little bit more color-wise. There's the before that filter and the after for that filter. And the only thing I have left to do is, uh, to me these greens are a little too green and they're distracting me. So I'm going to take the saturation of the greens down a little bit. Uh, you know, about halfway really. I just, I don't really care about the greens in the plant. You can see with the light shining on them that they're green and that's great. But the before to me, it was just a little too green and I don't really want that color to be too prominent in the photo. So the beauty of Luminar, of course, with the HSL filter is that you can selectively adjust the hue, saturation, or luminance of any of those uh, major colors. And that's really the edit. So let me uh, show you the before where we started. That's the before, before any edits at all. And the after, much more vibrant, colorful photo. I use Dodge and Burn to really highlight the foreground and sort of darken the center section. And I use things like um, saturation and vibrance and the split color warmth to really pop the sky a little bit, uh, along with the color temperature, of course. So let me show you one more time. There's the before and there's the after. So that's three photos. And uh, that's my uh, what would have been a Facebook Live uh, Luminar live show. But I just wanted to walk through some edits. And the point is here that while uh, there are a lot of filters, you don't have to use a ton. Obviously, I used a lot on this photo, but you can uh, you can go sparingly, like on the first two photos, and I got very dramatically different results than where I started using just two, three, four filters. And so that's the power and flexibility of Luminar. And of course, as in this photo, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine filters, and I made a dramatic change in the photo. But uh, that's how it works, my friends. I hope that it's helpful, and I hope you've gotten something out of this. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them, and I'll do my best to answer and help. And I'll see you again on the next Illuminar Live. And thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day, and we'll talk later. Goodbye.